Ever since the breakup of the Soviet Union, there were five major ways of extension of NATO, and uh, all of them back into what geopoliticians call uh, the sphere of influence of the former Soviet Union. And all of these uh, ways of, of enlargement, uh, you know, made Moscow complain about the West violating the unspoken agreements that NATO would not expand to eastward that were given to the Russian or then Soviet leadership uh, in late 1980s, early 1990s. But the joining of the post-Soviet countries, especially Ukraine and Georgia, and especially Ukraine, has always been a red line for a number of reasons. Uh, for geopolitical reasons, obviously, the quote-unquote line of contact between NATO and Russian military would be immediate and missile launches uh, would be made much easier as the Russian military sees it. It's also a uh, poke in the eye of, of Moscow uh, because this is uh, really kind of the last bastion. And uh, when Putin said in, I think in December, that Russia is cornered or pushed against the wall and has no way to retreat, I think it was not a metaphor, but rather a real reflection of how the Russian leadership feels at the moment. Because if Ukraine is in NATO, then at the, not just at the Russia's doorstep, it literally is on the threshold. I think the Russian military deployments alongside the Ukrainian border at this moment are not about invading Ukraine. That would be perhaps too obvious. And most importantly, there are no clear political goals behind that intervention and I haven't heard anyone clearly explain what may be the political goals because ultimately wars are fought to achieve certain political goals, not just for the hell of it. But I do think it's to compel the West to diplomatic talks and to, to compel the West to take the security proposals that Russia put forward a lot more seriously than they did in the past. I think the whole campaign, the diplomatic offensive and the military deployments that, that Moscow has initiated over the past few months are exactly about making sure that the West gives written guarantees that Ukraine is not going to join NATO. They are supplying weapons and military trainers and there are a bunch of uh, private military contractors killing up the country at this moment that may actually embolden the leadership in Kiev or you know some actors in Ukraine who are willing to derail these talks to launch provocations or some uh, military offensives on Donbass region that would in, in turn provoke response from the Donbass and Russia, and then we would quickly escalate to a major conflict. That scenario is not entirely off the table, and that I think is what concerns many involved players at this moment. If the constructive answer is not followed, and the West continues its aggressive course, then Moscow, as the President has said, will take the necessary measures. I don't think the the entire situation has been launched to prop up Putin's popularity at home for a number of reasons. One reason is that in political systems such as that in Russia, people's popularity and ratings of the politicians, even the top politicians, are not a major driver or influencer of foreign policy decisions. But most importantly, so far, the people giving the latest polls have embraced the official narrative of Moscow that it's the United States and then broadly the West who are to blame for the crisis.